in the 21st century, cell phones have become a huge part of our day-to-day -day routines. Whether we want to believe it or not, they are a huge source of happiness in our lives. I wanted to find out the true effects on cell phones on our minds and our bodies. So I'm going to do a little research. How much time per day do you think you spend on your phone? Um, I would say probably like four hours a day. Uh, I'd say about five hours? Two hours to four hours, anywhere between those two. And do you think that your phone distracts you or do you use it for like day-to-day uh, day -day, like work-related things? Um, I think both. I think some, half the time it's like useful and like for things that I need and then half the time it's just distracting. For the most part, like texting and Snapchat. I'd say both. I'd say both. I'd say it's a 50-50 ratio. After hearing from these students about the amount of time they spend on their phones, I realized that four hours is way more time than it sounds. The average person is awake for around 16 hours, meaning that a minimum of one quarter of these people's days was spent staring at a screen. To get another side of the story, I'm meeting with a student here in Newton North who doesn't even own a smartphone. I have a flip phone and it's usually off. So I only use it when I'm like, hey, could you pick me up? I have email, so that's really all I need. I, I can talk to people <laughs> up front. A lot of people will look at me like, oh, okay, where they pretend they get it, but they're like, that's kind of weird. It's also kind of a bragging thing. <laughs> at this point, now I can be that only guy without any social media. And when people are like, hey, how can I contact you? And I'm like, here's my home phone number. <laughs> In order to get a feel for how strong an effect our phones may have, I've decided to put myself through a little test, not using this for five days, and seeing what kind of effects it has, positive and negative. All right, so it is day one of the no phones experiment. I went to bed last night and I didn't have to make sure that my phone was charging next to me on the bedside table, which is kind of freeing in a way, but I woke up this morning and I was like, gotta check my messages. I had this urge, you know, to check my phone, but there's, alas, nothing there to check. Uh, I'm usually a pretty technology, you know, dependent guy, so we'll see how it goes. I started to notice that a lot of the conversation around phones had to do with our brains. To find out why we stay attached to our phones and how we can work around it, I set up an interview with Mrs. Connolly, a psychology teacher here at Newton North. Um, I would call um, phone usage an addiction, um, and according to a recent poll by the National Safety Council, 82% of Americans would um, say that cell phones can be addictive, um, and 50% of teenagers themselves admit that they're addicted to their cell phones. Oh, we don't Really? Unpopular opinion. <laughs> Dopamine, a neurotransmitter, is, is um, a pleasure-seeking neurotransmitter. So it's released um, by our brain when we do things that we like. Um, and so when you post something on Facebook or um, if you, you know, write a comment on Instagram and people like that comment, dopamine is released. And so um, I think that's one of the reasons why we are so addicted to social media and so addicted to our cell phones. All right, well, it's day three. Um, I'm getting a little more used to this no phones thing, you know. I don't reach for my, f for my phone in the morning when I'm trying to check my messages to see who texted me last night. Um, when I'm in school and I'm bored, I don't, you know, I don't reach for my pocket. I learned how to flip my pencil, which is nice, when I'm bored in class or something. And, you know, it's getting a lot easier already. Being off my phone helped me start noticing some of the subtler things around me. What stuck out was how silent my house was, even though I have three little brothers. I realized that with technology all around them, they weren't spending their days playing outside or doing something creative. They were turning to their screens rather than each other. After doing some research, I found promising evidence that children under the age of 10 can get emotionally attached to their technology. This means that our generation is being affected by the technology we were using when we were younger. In order to see if it was possible to break this habit, I followed through with my experiment all the way to the end. All right, so day five now. It's uh, my last day of the experiment. Tonight I'm going to go downstairs and fetch my phone from my drawer. I know there are going to be so many notifications. Um, I've really gotten used to it over the last five days. They say it takes 66 days to break a habit, but it surprisingly hasn't taken me that long to realize just how much time we spend on our phones. Like, after not using my phone for so long, I now realize just how much time I've been gaining back 
from not using my phone and it's opened me up to trying so many new things and having so many new experiences that I just wouldn't have if I was always on my phone. So overall, a very positive experience. I highly recommend it. Um, even if you don't think you're one of those people who uses their phone a lot and it's always on their phone, I try it out, you know? Put your phone in a drawer for two or three days and just see what kind of effects it has on you, you know? You never know where you might end up. In our generation, cell phones can take control of our lives. They are a tool at first, but for most, they can easily become an addiction. And it's up to us to make sure we enjoy the life all around us, not just the one in our pocket. Signing off for NNTV, this is Evie Targershon.